Hello and welcome to the SciFest Movie Talk episode. So in this episode I'm discussing the 2009 science fiction action sequel Transformers Revenge of the Fallen as directed once again by Michael Bay and as based once again on the popular Hasbro Transformers toy franchise. Revenge of the Fallen is the first sequel to Bay's original 2007 Transformers blockbuster and so the second movie to be released in the overall Transformers live action movie franchise. Set two years following the events of the first movie, the Autobots, as led by Optimus Prime, as voiced by Peter Cullen, have formed an alliance with the armed forces, forming a special tactical unit known as Nest, in order to expose and remove any remaining residual Decepticon threat. Sam Witwicky, as played by Shirley Booth, is continuing his relationship with Michaela Barnes, as played by Megan Fox, after assisting the Autobots to bring down the Decepticons in the last movie, with Sam looking to start the next chapter of his life at college. However, fate, as it may seem, has other ideas, and as it turns out, written into Destiny many years ago, apparently, um, as we find out that the Transformers have indeed visited our planet many tens of thousand years ago looking to harness the power of our sun for themselves. The Decepticons looking to use the Ancients' technology to further the Transformers' species and guarantee its future, set about locating a fabled key, the Matrix, a device lost eons ago that legend would have it could be used to start the technology left by the Ancients. And so there once again Sam teams up with the Autobots along with Nest to bring a halt to the Decepticons' plans locate the Matrix themselves before the Decepticons do, and stop our world from being destroyed in the process. So, Bay's back again with more booming Transformers madness, and yet somehow I can't help but feel a little underwhelmed this time around. The movie sets up more backstory for the Transformers, but this time around it feels strained, like we're having to force a reason to keep the Transformers on Earth, and keep coming back to a storyline based on our planet. The Transformers have been here before, influenced a whole heap of ancient societies, yet nobody had ever heard of them up until this point, um, on either side, until this very sequel. It does all feel a little bit convenient, you know? Um, now, don't get me wrong, this one still feels like an adventure. I just don't think it knows what kind of adventure it wanted to be. It tries to be so much all at the same time, it never really connects with any of it. Still, a fun time, you know. Hey, it's got gigantic robots in it. But that, if I'm honest, is where the bulk of the fun is. And that's only really going to carry you so far, you know. Is it a spectacle? Yes, for sure. When Bear's presenting the action, he's at his best. But the journey we take to get there is so fragmented and way more complicated than it needed to be. It really does just kind of take some effort to kind of keep the interest through much of its runtime. But it does manage, by the skin of its teeth, to keep some momentum going just enough to make it entertaining. A muddle, but an entertaining muddle nonetheless. Personally, I do find enjoyment with it. Nowhere near as much as the first. I don't think they ever recover, but it does offer some brilliantly awesome new Transformers for us to revel in on both sides, and every time Optimus Prime is transforming, it's an event to savour, you know, with each twist and turn rendered in majestic and grandiose bravado. His courage and conviction are on full display. We also get a glimpse into some of the Transformers' biology outside of the Allspark, and there are some pretty decent creature creations. We also do get more of the Decepticons, which they do make a comeback with more, vin you know, more villainous and more ruthless than ever. A real kind of mean streak this time around, and a lot more sinister than we'd kind of previously seen. I also like the fact that there's a choice uh, that can be made. Decepticons don't have to be inherently evil. Um, just those that kind of follow Megatron and the Fallen. And in this, two new Decepticons uh, to the fold, Wheelie, as voiced by Tom Kenny, and Jetfire, as voiced by Mark Ryan, Simply steal the show, um, adding some very much needed levity and charisma to an otherwise darker plotline. And the robo combos? Nice. The human element, however, um, feels far less consequential this time around. Again, 
more shoehorned into the plot than anything else, um, and much less convincing as a result. For most of the film, there's just they're just kind of running around pretty aimlessly, and, and certainly in Sam's case, come across as a tad little bit ungrateful. Treating Bumblebee, uh, one of the Autobots, like a pet, for instance, um, like a juvenile. Um, yet these are war-torn protectors, some thousands of years old. Just didn't sit quite right, you know? Neither did its misplaced sexual innuendo, which, which endearing in the first, uh, seemed much more vulgar for no apparent reason in this. Humping robots and other hanging appendages, you know? Something we really didn't need to see. Additionally, the effects seemed rougher at times. They had kind of been rushed through, and that's, it really does feel like that. Whereas the original kind of still stood up exceptionally well in this respect, um, this one really did have some kind of signs of wear and tear. It's sort of a mix between Highlander, Star Wars, and Indiana Jones, um, and not so much of the good parts of either of those series either, never really kind of settling on one true tone of its own. Overall, the sequel ups the spectacle, ups the destruction, gives us even more Transformers, but somehow doesn't have nowhere near the same level of impact as the original. There's lots of posturing, but also there's a lot of bluster um, and a pretty convoluted plot that gets clunky and too haphazard to really keep its focus. But it, it's still a decent adventure all told. There's about as much to like here as there is to not, you know? I mean, when the action's flowing, Bay is on top of his game. Otherwise, it's a little laboured um, and just doesn't seem to kind of quite match the energy or charm of the original in quite the same way. So, that brings me to the end of this episode. Many thanks for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please do leave a like. Please do hit that subscribe button for more movie reviews, trailer reactions and other movie related content. Absolutely loved having you at South Face Movie Talk and definitely love to have you back. Most of all, just thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.